two running backs. who had 10 touchdowns during the regular season scores his first in the Fiesta Bowl. Well, attempt the extra point. And it is good. And Michigan pulls within four. We'll be back with the kickoff in just a moment. Possession football, and I really think that's what they're going to have to do in the second half, maintain possession to keep it away if they possibly can. Jeff Berger, number 12, stepping into your picture, is the new quarterback. He's the sophomore from Cedartown, Georgia. Handing off to the pitcher is back. He waits, throws down the left. And it is complete at the 45-yard line. Eight seconds left on the clock. Wigan, the intended receiver, a 31-yard gain. Berger, the quarterback. Middleton, the motion man. They pitch to Jackson. He steps outside near the 40-yard line with three. No, I guess not. Colbert, can, no, I guess they're going to give it a try. Chris Johnson will attempt a field goal with three seconds to go. Colbert is in because he is the holder for Johnson. Right. So he will put the ball down. And this will be a 57-yard attempt by Johnson. And it is short. No game. Second down and 10. And here's Jamie Morris. Slips the tackle. 14 carries. I started to say this earlier. He's on 20 yard line. First down in town. Colas are in motion. Gerald White. Fight to the five. Dives. Did they say? Did he make it? No, they're going to mark. I think just short. He needed 20 to score. They're going to give him 19. They're going to give him 19 and two feet. Give him the ball again from the I formation. First down, goal to go. And turn the light. Jill White trying to dive over the right side right of the running backs. Two tight ends. They show motion. And the option. Fake of the pitch. Harbaugh dives. Did he make it? Yes. The ball just has to break the play. The official said that he made it. Touchdown. Michigan for Jim Harbaugh. Michigan second touchdown in three and a half minutes. And then they've been trailing, and now they're back in front. The extra point by Pat Burns is good. It is Michigan 17, Nebraska 14. We'll be back for the kickoff. Here comes Nebraska from the 18-yard line, and here's Doug Duvall. And look at the third quarter. Best season. And look at the third quarter. 79 to their opponent's six, which is, they're on their way for that right now. Of course, they're not going to score 79. I don't think. But they have scored 14. There's Clayton to throw. It's there on target. He goes to Todd Frayne, the tight end. And Nebraska moves out to the 40-yard line. A gain of 21 yards. Blank of that offense. First down. From the option back. Covered it very well defensively. Third down and 15. Michigan now with four in the secondary. They look for the pass. A little play action. Pass is complete. The ball comes first, they're going to say no. They're going to rule it incomplete. David Arnold blocked it. And he has it for Michigan at the five-yard line of Nebraska. Who's the punter? Dan Wingard was the punter, number 15. David Arnold blocked it, and he and Ed Hood were scrambling for it. And they now, got it 
third at the six. Now watch, watch the receiver on the outside. Now watch him lay out and time it perfectly. Number 15 timed it perfectly, and that's what most punt blockers don't do. They get a little too close to the kicker. In Ohio, six-yard line they mark it. First down, go to go, Michigan. Black and Gerald White will be the tailback, and Smirky comes in as a tight end to join Eric Caddis. Two tight ends on the set. Gerald White, but Jim Harbaugh coming out with the football. Ryan Davis making the last stop. Here's White, and he is right as they're on NBC with the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl. The Pac-10 champion UCLA Bruins battle the third-ranked Hawkeyes of Iowa as quarterback Chuck Long makes good on his vow to be in Pasadena on New Year's Day at the Rose Bowl. The best and brightest of the bowls are on NBC Sports. So they go for three, and they get it. So even though Michigan moves their total to 20 to 14, it's a boost for the Nebraska defense because they all from the six. They have to settle for a That's it again. He'll throw it. They split out far to the left. Jackson in the middle, close to the 10-yard. 11 throwing today. And that's why they'll run Jackson, and he's going to be short. About it. And now Michigan expects him to run. They show three in the secondary. And here it is. First down of the 31-yard line. Go ahead. Mispronounced it. <laughs> I'm over two. Here we go. On the pitch, it is fumble. And then scooped out of bounds. And now what the key was Roger Lindstrom. Now Lindstrom was about four yards in front of all record. Today's attendance, 72,454. And 72 degrees. Third down and seven. First down. They got a first down inside the 20. The pitch is to Steve Taylor, the quarterback. A mix-up is he threw. He was going to hand off to... Little play action fake. There's pressure. He throws in zone. Incomplete. Draw or a good and uncaught. It was not pass interference. Fourth down and five. Little play action fake. He rolls out. He it's only, his, his record is 2-10. I mean, he'd like right. to play a couple of double-headers. That's right. Well, he's on a roll. He fires it. In. Rod Smith, the attended receiver, and Doug Mallory knocks it down, and Taylor just stepped back. And that is his 22nd 100-yard game. Went forward. You know, he's only played 39 games. How about that naked bootleg by Berger? He'll keep it. Now he'll chuck it down, field the parks. What back? And it could be a big factor in this football game. Yeah. Too, if they can keep this drive going. That's true. That's true. Second down and ten. Seven and a half minutes to go here in Fiesta Bowl 15. Harbaugh with a little play action, and he goes deep. And it is incomplete as he overthrows Paul Jokic. Team play in this series. The short man down, and they just barely made it to the fullback where I believe going over the middle. Let's see what happens here. Jackson is picked up. He was going to go airborne. And nose guard Sammy O'Brien was the first to get to a The War Eagle watching on. The cotton ball could be coming down to this play. To defend at this point. At AG 30, Jackson 34 won't get it. Let the defenders in, and they stop the Heisman Trophy winner. For a touchdown, and then line up for the onside kick. Game. Quarterback sneak. There it is. Touchdown, Nebraska. Two twenty-nine left to go in the game. Tina twenty-four.
three, 200 yards passing on the day. Running Tony and Rocker around. Kevin Murray on third and three for the Aggies. Back to throw it. He's with Nate, 240 pounds senior. And now they can take the full countdown. It's been a good one. Michigan had to come from behind. They trail at halftime 14 to 3. And Michigan is going to win it 27 to 23. And credit the Michigan defense in the third quarter. And Bo Schembrecher has improved his goal record. <laughs> There it is, the final countdown. Once again, it has been a great fiesta ball for Sam Ritigliano and Gary Jones. I'm Charlie Jones, the final Michigan 27, Nebraska 23. Wolverine. This is Dick Hamburg with Merlin Olsen. Welcome to the traditional football party in Pasadena, California. The featured guests on this New Year's Day, the Iowa Hawkeyes and the UCLA Bruins. And we'll be back in Pasadena. His defense will try everything to get Bo the ball back with a defensive back. On both sides of the ball, the offense obviously, particularly in the first half where they had almost 300. Block ticking away. And there is the man that's had a sensational career. Well, this is the end of one career, but the beginning of another. <laughs> R.C. Slocum, the defensive coordinator, embracing head coach Jackie Sherrill. And Texas A&M busts in again. Anthony Tony. Thirty-five to sixteen. Does that really pumped your opponent up? And you talk about it in the NFL, a 3,000-yard season by a man playing in 16 games. Here's Chuck Long in 11 games, just 22 yards away from a 3,000-yard season. That gives you the kind of uh, numbers that show you the impact of his performance on this Iowa successful year. He really has an unusual throwing style that we'll try and document for you during the day. Looks almost like a mix-up, and then it's oh. stacked up by uh, two scores. Number two rusher after really only being in that backfield for two years was a wing back two years. Hudson through the middle and he is joining. Big play. On the ground, it is a first down. It's a fullback. Hudson fine game. It makes the passing game a lot easier. First and goal. Hudson twisting to the one yard. Harmon that kept it on the ground and now it's Hudson over the top. Touchdown. Outland to try the point after. The last hit to hold, and it's good. After Nate Greer's interception, 29 yards in seven plays. Most best and brightest are on NBC as the Orange Bowl lights up the night sky. Joe Paterno leads the number one Nittany Lions of Penn State as they battle the second-ranked Oklahoma Sooners for the national championship. Plus the pageantry of the famed Orange Bowl halftime. New Year's Day, the best and brightest of the bowls are on NBC Sports. David Hudson, a redshirt freshman, actually. He has three more years of eligibility. He has given Iowa the early lead 7-0. Now Rob Houtland to kick off to the Bruins. A couple of freshmen back for UCLA. Daryl Henley and Danny Thompson. It's to Henley's side at the one. And down on a sharp open put up the game's only score. If they can catch that man in that neutral zone, or uh, offside even without contact, they'll take the five, and they get it here. So now the tight end in motion. Rangers. Both of them stayed near home. Second and four. Durrell in motion. Use the blocking assignments of the offense. They'll watch that defensive line. They'll do it throughout the course of the game. Third and four, Stevens to play. He's got his man for now, the tight end, and the first down at the 36-yard line. 
contract may not get up till next Friday. They, they call that the freeze play. It's strictly communication. <laughs> they with, do freeze, too, <laughs> with center and quarterback. So the first down makes, or the five-yard penalty makes it second and three. Marcus Green. Iowa fans are hopes that did materialize of making it to the Rose Bowl. On third and short, it's Stevens. Complete to Marcus Greenwood. And a first down at the Iowa 40. Hard line. Stevens on first down to throw. He guns that one complete at the 31. There you saw the strength of his four minutes remaining in the first quarter. The sneak by Stevens. And it appears he has and started one game in the 85 season. And was injured and Norrie took over the controls and had an outstanding year. Place kicker out of David Clinton's hole to try to tie it. And it is good. Or even with a two point conversion to go ahead. Second and long, the fake draw, which they've used so often, then down the middle, almost intercepted by Steve Jordan. It's left. takes the sneak and now they say touchdown UCLA Matt Stevens Stevens uh, that's quite sure himself let's see to whom he goes let's follow Stevens it's a nice story Made his dues. He's rooted for David Norrie most of the year. That's a third string quarterback, Brendan McCracken, number 12. And there is partner and quarterback, David Norrie. David Clinton holding. And UCLA with its highest point total of the year. Iowa giving up more points than it allowed by 10 all season long. That he has put together back to back. Oh, two Rose Bowls at Fiesta, another Rose. Another Rose. Here's UCLA with a win and they're getting ready in Miami. Thank you, Dick. The Orange Bowl rocking already, awaiting the kickoff of this game for the national championship. Number one, Penn State, and number two, Oklahoma. Well, it's interesting, the matchup, Barry Switzer calls his offense high power, high risk, and the Penn State Texas impact people are going for the ball. Well, the Nittany Lions like to get that ball, give a short field for their offense. We'll see a great freshman tonight, Jamel Holloway, uh, Holloway of the Oklahoma Sooners. We'll be back with the Orange Bowl. Now back to Dick and Merlin at the Rose Bowl. All right, Don Cricky, Bob Tuffy will look forward to your call. Chuck Long underneath. Kills me. You made the contact. You may get on it yet. Four minutes and 51 seconds left. Long would like to at least get some window dressing. That's Robert Smith. Correct my call. Instead of a third and one, it's third down and about four and a half. Thrown down the middle is incomplete. The pass intended for Willie Smith and 
coming up is Andre Kramer, the left cornerback to Sun. Can share the same Rose Bowl memory, both with a touchdown. Bill Sr. in a victory here in 1957. Coming all the way across, ducking to the outside. One-on-one -on -one coverage, Dennis Price. With that ball perfectly thrown, and he got one foot down. That's all he needed. The Helderson incomplete. And down Cricky. Thank you, Dick. Big numbers at the Rose Bowl. We're waiting to see what will happen in this battle for the national championship at the Orange Bowl. Number one, Penn State, and number two, Oklahoma. Don Cricky with Bob Tuffy. Both these teams like to run the ball. Barry Switzer Trump says he likes to see his team pass in pre-game warm-ups. Yeah, when they run the ball and they start to play, but Joe Paterno might have to have a throw in. Well, team. I'll tell you what, though. I'd like to see Penn State give it to their big fullback, Smith and Manoa, really bang it at that Oklahoma defense. Now let's go back to Dick and Merlin at the Rose Bowl. Going to get his chance. He's going to have his opportunity to at least get into this ball game. Stevens getting a big standing ovation from the UCLA Partisans across the way. And there's Nori from Portland, Oregon. Went to Jesuit High School. Battled for four years on the bench and earned the starting role as a fifth-year senior. Only to miss the start in the Rose Bowl. He gets to the right man. He's been the Bruins at the six-yard line. That James Norrie trying to get the Bruins into the 50s. With just 17 seconds left, and apparently that will be it. They'll let the final second stick away. Another disappointing afternoon for the Big Ten and for the Iowa Hawkeyes and the West Coast Pacific Ten. UCLA celebrate a very impressive win, 45-28. Outstanding performance by the Bruins. who really came out of that underdog position to hand Hayden Fry and his favorite Hawkeyes a block. The former coach in there, athletic Rick. And it's the first first down of the ball game for the balls. The ball swung out to McGee. Tim McGee, the All-American wide receiver up across the 30 and near the 30 for the first down. But Dickey's son, Darrell, delivers the ball sharply. But Joey Quakescales has no chance at all because when the ball arrived, so did Tolbert. Third and short go underneath and get the first down. The pass caught by the fullback Howard coming out of the For Miami. Play like a champion, a sign that's been part of the Oklahoma locker room for decades. Every Sooner taps this sign before he takes the field. The Oklahoma Sooners, number two in the nation, still smarting from an upset loss to Washington in the Orange Bowl a year ago. Tonight, the Nittany Lions of Penn State come in undefeated and number one in the country, but they are a decided underdog. Good evening, everyone. Don Quickie with Bob Trumpy on a great night in Miami, Florida for this most important game, a matchup of college football heavyweights, and they both trained hard for this showdown. Penn State coach Joe Paterno says Trump, he's never had a more dedicated, hard-working football team. And I tell you what, too, Penn State is looking for respect. When it was very obvious a number of weeks ago that Penn State was going to play a New Year's Day Bowl, Paterno went to the team and said, where do you want to go? The team said, we want the biggest challenge. Tonight, they find it in Oklahoma. The team has been here an awful lot, and as you said, a year ago, they lost their chance for the national championship. Players are rededicated this year. They came down December 20th, have worked very hard for this showdown with the number one team in the country, Penn State. On the field to also cover the game, former Dolphin great Bob Gleasy and a former Penn State and Dolphin standout Jimmy Zeppelo. Bob? Thanks, Don. And you know, Jimmy, the key to this game may get down to the quarterbacks. For Penn State, John Schaefer, I think he's going to have to establish the pass very early to take some pressure and put some pressure on that Oklahoma number one defense. On the other side of the field, I think Jamel Holloway, he's the, the uh, leader of the wishbone offense, and I think he's going to have to keep the ball off the ground and really try to get something going for that offensive team. Well, emotionally, Holloway will have to play very well. He's just a freshman, as you mentioned. It's interesting to note that early in the week, the Penn State team 
game seemed very quiet, very sedate. Maybe a little bit too tight while the Oklahoma players were more boisterous, having a good time here in South Florida. But that changed when they came onto the field tonight. Penn State seemed to be more enthusiastic, jumping around, slapping each other on the helmets, while the Oklahoma Sooners were more quiet. We'll be back with the kickoff. Number one, Penn State. Number two, Oklahoma. The national championship tied to the outcome in just a moment. Can the Sooners in their crimson and cream. A year ago, they came into the Orange Bowl a chance of the national championship. And a very sharply trained Washington team under Don James upset them 28-17. And the Sooners, Trump, have not gotten over that. Uh, there are a lot of players from the Oklahoma Sooners who, when they came to the Orange Bowl this week to practice, they were all mentioning they had bad memories of this place. The last time the Sooners played on grass was last year's Orange Bowl loss to the Washington Huskies. And Barry Switzer has put these guys through an awful lot of work. They came down here very early, had two a days. Seems to be a rededication of the football team, and they're not to be denied tonight. But Penn State, on the other hand, I repeat, looking for respect tonight. They just did a coin flip with the new Statue of Liberty coin. About to do that right now as Michael Zordich, 43 to your right, steps in for the Nittany Lions. An All-American rover back, the hero they call him. He's a key to Penn State's stopping the wishbone if they can. Let's listen. just here they won the toss Penn State won the toss and they will go on defense the choice is to Oklahoma and Penn State has their choice to begin the second half I think Joe Paterno wants to put his defense on the field first Don interesting choice by Joe Paterno there's the engine you just saw in the Oklahoma offense quarterback Janelle Holloway as coach Paterno in his 20th year as head man a very quietly confident football coach that his team is ready for a super effort. They're going to need one to beat an Oklahoma team that, since Holloway's taken over at quarterback, has averaged 38 points a game over the last seven games. And Oklahoma, as you may know, is number one in America in defense, giving up less than nine points a game. Penn State is not impressed, though. Back deep now for the Oklahoma Sooners, Anthony Stafford, a splitter from St. Louis. He's a freshman, and Patrick Collins, number 33 from Miami, Florida. UCLA, a runaway victor, 45 to 28, and the Rose Bowl just completed at Pasadena. You saw on NBC Sports, and here is Massimo Monte into the ball for Penn State. A skitter. And it's taken by Stafford, Anthony Stafford, the freshman, is talking to down the ball. So the Sooners send out their offense with freshman Jamel Holloway from Carson, California. He's been absolutely a standout since taking over when the regular starter fractured a leg. But El Carr, a power back to fullback, second leading rusher. Speed at the halfback. Spencer Tillman, a breakaway runner with power. And the other back, Patrick Collins, also a sprinter. Jackson, Keith Jackson, a sophomore tight end. Some Raiders, the best in the country. Derek Shepard, the flank. They don't throw to him often, but he can get deep. Anthony Stafford now in the starting backfield for Oklahoma. First and ten for the Sooners. And State comes to hit from the freshman. Stafford on what looked to be Trump, a trick play that certainly didn't turn out to be one as Penn State stuffed it. All-American linebacker Shane Conlon, number 31, made the play. Was well, going to be a reverse, but the big matchup that we're going to watch all night long is the center, Rich Ewells, against Mike Russo, the nose tackle. You see good penetration there by Tim Johnson of the Penn State defensive line. Jackson was the pitch man, gave it to Stafford, lost on the play. Minus two at second and 12. From the 18-yard line of the center. It's time they hit out to about the 22-yard line. Lydell Carr, the fullback, got the ball. He might see it a lot tonight. A sophomore from Enid over the rush. Big offensive line, Eric Pope is 275. Guard Mark Hudson next to him is 280. 
The center, Rick Ewell's an undersized center. The starter, Travis Simpson, went down with an ankle fracture. He's only 250. Paul Ferrar is 260 at right guard. And Anthony Phillips could be a great one at tackle. He's only a freshman of 280 pounds. Holloway. Eyes up. And third down. And Penn State shuts down the bone. So on three fires from scrimmage. The Nittany Lions break the bone early. Don Graham made that tackle 53, a senior from Pittsburgh. That's one thing you'll notice about the Nittany Lion defense. They attack that line of scrimmage. They've got defensive linemen who started out as linebackers, Don. Great mobility and great foot speed to get to that exchange point. Mike Winchester is in to punt the ball now for Oklahoma. Jim Coates, the sophomore, is back. Very, very good return man for the Nittany Lions. Jim Coates with an eight-yard return after a 45-yard punt by Winchester gives Kent State good field position. So Trump early, the initial decision by Paterno to kick off worked out well. We'll be back with uh, Nittany Lions on offense right after this. The 1986 Orange Bowl is brought to you by Porsche, inviting you to see the 944 and the new 944 Turbo at your authorized Porsche dealer. By Bud Light, everything else is just a life. And by John Hancock Financial Services. Meeting today's needs with a range of financial products. The 52nd Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida. Don Crickey with Bob Crumpy, Bob Creasy, and Jimmy Cephalo as the Nittany Lions of Penn State. Unbeaten, number one in the country, but a decided underdog gets the ball for the first time in this scoreless game. DJ Dozier hits ahead, but a penalty marker goes down. Tony Rayburn, one of the safeties, made the stop for Oklahoma. Might have been motion in the Penn State offense. There was. John Schaefer is the junior quarterback, completing only 45% of his passes, but he's 54-0 as a starting quarterback dating back to grammar school. Steve Smith, a power back, averaging five yards a carry, and he can block D.J. Dozier, the breakaway runner, averaging almost five yards a pop. Eric Hamilton, one of the wide receivers, they don't go to him often, but he can get deep, and so can the other, Ray Roundtree. Averaging 20 yards a catch. The Oklahoma coaches are very impressed with Dean Demidio, the tight end for the Penn State Nittany Lions. He's caught four for touchdowns this year. Nothing, nothing. Nittany Lions in white. After the penalty, it's first and 15. Goes Offensive line, Stan Clayton, left tackle 265. Mitch Perrott, next to him, weighs 260. The center is Scott Radisek. His brother, an All-American at Penn State, now Kansas City, he weighs 255. Todd Moles is the anchor of the offensive line, and Shane and Chris Commons, the biggest, at 275 at right tackle. Nothing, nothing to score. It is second down and 11 for Penn State. Penalty knocker down. Demidio is the man they went to, and there could be a call here against the secondary offense. Nittany Lions elected to kick off in this game. Now, first and 10 for Penn State. Well, we got football right up the middle. The Nittany Lions go, and they take it down to the 42-yard line of Oklahoma. Steve Smith, a 235-pound fullback, ran it. Tony Casillas, maybe the premier defensive lineman in America. He got the Lombardi Award, a consensus All-American at nose tackle. Next to him is 275-pound tackle Jeff Tupper. Steve Bryan at 260, an outstanding tackle for the Sooners. Linebackers very fast. Reed and Murphy on the outsides. Kevin Murphy got All-American at 50. Here's a breakaway run. with the ball is Steve Smith again, 36. Kevin Murphy, the outside linebacker we saw a moment ago. The inside backers are Paul Meliazzo. And All-American Brian Bowsworth, who got the first Butkus Award, is the best linebacker in the country, and he's a sophomore. There's the secondary men. They switch them around. They'll play sometimes corner, sometimes safety. They've not given up a lot of yards to the pass, except in that one loss to Miami. Pitch back. Dozier. And first down, he's working high to the 30-yard line of Oklahoma. The linebacker Kevin Murphy knocked him down. Nice pickup for Dozier. And the Nittany Lions running well. Smith, two carries for 12 yards. Dozier, two for nine. Second down and about five. Play take. Schaefer, down a man inside the 20-yard line. It's down to the 18 for Penn State. First down as Eric Hamilton goes.
bow tie and comes down with a 12-yard reception. And Ken Spiderly in this game is a roller against the number one defense. We might need 200 yards passing the ball to win this game. They got 12 there. As the Nittany Lions are now well in the field goal range. Out pattern, deep throw. With Ray Roundtree running down on the far flank. Can't get to the ball, so it'll be second down and 10 for the Nittany Lions at the 18-yard line of... He's the starting quarterback. He was the Los Angeles area player of the year. Banning High School, they won the city championship, and now he starts as a freshman. Right now, the Nittany Lions are moving on offense. Scoreless game. Very good. Set of linebackers I have ever seen in college football, Don. Eighth play of the drive coming up. 47 yards in the first seven for Penn State. This is their first possession. Nothing, nothing. Schaefer cuts and fires, and Ron Free comes down with the ball. Oh, Hamilton coming up. Eric Hamilton comes down with a 14-yard reception to the two-yard line. Ricky Dixon, the free safety, saved the touchdown, if but for the moment. Ron Ron Free was open earlier. Schaefer holds this ball a long time from behind the defense. And you can see he's waiting for him to cross Bowsworth, 44. Then he throws it into the other linebacker coverage. Country still comes up with a big catch. Boy, that's threading the needle right there. His second now for 26 yards. A senior from Cleveland, Ohio, Eric Hamilton. Now first and goal for underdog Penn State. First back, Smith. He's in, it looks like. No signal yet, though. Linesman can in, and they're not spotting a touchdown until they unpile. Then they're going to rule it, and nose of the ball is at a... So now, with the nose of the ball actually breaking the plane, it would appear from here, they go second down and goal. This time is on the book. Tim Manoa. Straight ahead, pop. And the Penn State hit the Lions after the most intense series of practices that Joe Paterno teams ever had. Get out and take over the football game at least early, stopping Oklahoma on the Sooners' first possession and then running the ball right down their throat with two big throws that led the way to that touchdown by Manoa. On John Schaefer, first series, two of three, 26 yards, and that's a quarterback that completes less than 50% of his passes. Guys, 54-0 as a start, as we mentioned. Someone said, yeah, but he never played Oklahoma. But right now, with the extra point up and good by Massimo Maka, the Nittany Lions look every bit the number one rating they have. They take a 7 to nothing lead. Look at this big fullback fire in there. Tim Manoa is hungin'. He wants to be separated from those people who are Samoan on a friendly basis. He likes the end zone, though. He can go. To the 29. Over the line of scrimmage. Watch his chain. Going back right is Patrick Conn. Then State defense shows a lot of punch. Lots of switching. That's three tackles. They don't hit a block in time. You know, Holloway is in deep trouble. Shane Conlon, all American, and Michael Jordan, another all American. Shoot the gap and they stuff the quarterback for a 13 yard loss. Biggest way to beat the triple option or the wishbone is get to the exchange point. Shane Condon had a blitz on the outside. Zordich, the man they call the hero, he's basically a strong safety right there at the exchange point. I asked Shane Condon at practice yesterday, I saw, I saw he apprehensive about playing a team like Oklahoma. He said, not at all. We're going to do our talking in our night. They're playing tonight. Second down and 23 for the Sooners. The run they go and get it out across the 20 is Lydell Carr, the 195-pound fullback. All the way completes with 41% of his passes. That's all, a 41% pass, and he throws in frequently. And not here. Not there either. Janelle Holloway not down until he gets out. Across the 35-yard line of Oklahoma, 17-yard run on the play, but still short of the first down as Conlon made another tack. And Conlon can play football. Yeah. He's been on every hit tonight. I think we knew that before. All-American outside backer at 6'3", 220. Winchester punting for a second time. Arking cut. Coach takes it at his 20. Gets the block, not trying to outrun the pursuit. And Oklahoma looks good on special team cover because the knockdown is made. A five-yard loss on the return after a 40-yard card from the folks at NBC Sports. Ready, set, go! 
Penn State is using something a little bit different today. It's called a teleprinter. They utilized it earlier this year. It's a machine that uh, is able to help the Penn State offense or defense understand what's going on in the field. The coach is up in the booth. He'll draw some things up on a sheet of paper. It'll be sent down through this system. And already tonight, Coach Bob Phillips of the Penn State offense has changed the blocking system a little bit, sent it down here, and the coaching staff has utilized it with the players on the field. Hmm. The electronic A. Yeah, high-tech football. On the mouth football. Penn State 7, Oklahoma nothing. Penn State second possession of the game. Baker gives off and the, the coaches pull ball of UPI has Penn State with the ball number one in America and Oklahoma on defense number two. A showdown, a matchup of heavyweights. John Schaefer looking for the inside is 10. Oh, man, he almost gave it away. It was up for grabs at the Penn State 30. D.J. Dozier swinging out with the man on the ball. Tom Peters two for four so far for 26 yards. Third down and almost 10. Gets it to a tight end, Genetio, and the Sooners come calling on him right at the 6th. Plant stayed in his pass rush lane. Derek stayed with his coverage. Derek White, very, very little gain on that tight end screen. John Bruno, a standout punter, hits the ball well downfield for Penn State. Derek Shepard, it is 42. And Shepard gets his lateral. The clean it appears to be as the ball is advanced now down close to the 45-yard line of Penn State. It was tackled Mike Russo. Tim Johnson, next to him, a 250-pounder from Sarasota, Florida. Bob White, a very fast defensive end. Shane Conlon, we've seen make a lot of plays already in this game, an All-American at outside linebacker. On the other side is Don Graham. Inside backers are smaller, but they're very fast. And Clay Bauer and Rogers Alexander. First and uh, second down, about 12 now for the Sooners. Damon Scali, that is a flanker as they go to the fullback. In Paramus, New Jersey, a junior just 212. Rogers Alexander's 210. These both great open field tacklers. Duffy Cobbs at one corner. Lance Hamilton getting some All-American honors at the other. Ray Isom, a top-notch free safety and uh, hero back. The rover, Michael Zordich. Last time in long yardage now. You know, Holloway ran the quarterback draw. Holloway on third and nine. He loops it out. He's got to six tight end. He's got it. Linebacker in America in one pole. Got the bucket for it. Hard breaking tackle. Some excellent blocking by the offensive front. Look at this. And Sir Tillman got the call. Bob White got him. We'll see if he's a loss. Is this the defense? They're saying that's intentional. From the basic spot to the previous spot. Four second down. I think Zordas just grabbed whatever was out there yeah. as he reached in, but it gives a big assist to the Sooner offense. Now puts them right back in position. Second down and seven coming up. Ten yard line of Penn State. 15 seconds to go in the first quarter, and the Nittany Lions lead seven up in there. That's going to do it for the first quarter of the 1986 Orange Bowl. So the Sooners of Barry Switzer are challenging, but after 15 minutes, Penn State is a 7-0 leader. Bob Trumpy, this is Don Quickie back at the Orange Bowl. Our yards are even through the first quarter, but not the score. Penn State's a 7-0 leader. Uh, Don, those 40 yards rushing by the Sooners, primarily Lydell Carr. Jamel Holloway is very hell. Third down and four for Oklahoma. It's been lunchtime for Jamel Holloway. He's trying to do too much. Pete Giftopoulos on the tackle along with Rogers Alexander. That's another loss of four yards. Now, uh, remind you that Jamel Holloway is only 18 years old. Ray Isom on the deck here of the Orange Bowl with an injury. But I, I personally think that Jamel Holloway is trying to do too much. His option runs. And now in fourth down, the Sooners go to a field goal. Ready to try it is Tim Lasher. He had 26 yard attempt. He drills it up, and it looks good. It is, and the Sooners are on the board with 14.35 to play. Where's his success? Well, and right now, the Nittany Lions are putting the kickoff. 
Jim Coach is thrilled at the fifth. Penn State comes into this averaging 24 points a game, allowing less than 12. Dick McPherson, the Syracuse head coach, calls the Penn State offense a no-risk offense. An offense that <laughs> won't beat itself. <laughs> Nicky uh, Lyons kill the opposition in their mistakes. 7 3 Penn State. Incomplete. Eric Hamilton almost had his third catch as John Schaefer was hit and hard by a blitzing linebacker, Daryl Reed. Two nose tackle, Tony Cassie. It's a wrecking ball in the middle, busting them right up the middle on each play. Watch him, 92 for Oklahoma. DJ Dozier takes a hot play first half. Clock is running here at the 1986 Orange Bowl. Number one, Penn State with a 7-3 lead. Schaefer on third and 10. Ray Roundtree was going for the ball, but as you see, it was well overthrown. Now he is. And he will be fine to come back into the football game. They're taping that left knee. Gray Eisen will return to the lineup in the next series for Penn State's defense. Don? Thank you, Jimmy. That's good news for yes. Nitty Lions. Corporation Plymouth. The pride is back. Born in America again. By Teneco, building on quality. And by Federal Express. Why fool around with anyone else? Thirteen twenty-four to play in the first half. Don Quickie with Bob Trumpy, Bob Greasy, and Jimmy Cephalo at the 1986 Orange Bowl. Number two, Oklahoma, favored by over a touchdown in some estimations, trailing seven to three. Most teams don't get 68 plays. Right now, the Sooners going into alignment at their leisure, holding to a 16 to seven lead with 22 seconds to play in the first half. Penalty markers go down as the clock is stopped now. 22 seconds to play in the first. The Battle of the Poles, the Associated Press poll, and the UPI Coaches poll, both with Penn State number one in America. Miami number two in the AP Writers and Broadcasters poll. Oklahoma number two in the Coaches poll. Iowa's out of the picture now as far as any contention for national championship. They were beaten soundly in the Rose Bowl today. UCLA winning 45 to 28. In a game broadcast here on NBC, 16 to 7 the score here. Oklahoma rallying from a 7-0 first quarter deficit, scoring 16 unanswered points in the second quarter. As with 18 seconds to play in the half, the clock winds down. And it's going to wind out. Now they're going to call another timeout. We did an unbeaten season with a victory in the Orange Bowl, but we're never accorded a national yeah. championship. Is that something? Only official one they got was after they beat Georgia in the Sugar Bowl in 82. They beat Herschel Walker in Georgia in the Sugar Bowl in 82 and did an outstanding defensive job. Well, Joe Paterno's now got an interesting choice to start out the second half. He's trailing 16 to 7, but field position for the Penn State offense is, is absolutely critical to its success. So now trailing 16 to 7, do you take the ball and you have that option if you're Penn State, or do you once again kick it off, hope that your defense can stock Oklahoma and you have better field position the next time, the first time your offense gets the ball? If he should decide to change pitchers down the line, it's unlikely he will until late in the game, but if he should, his backup Matt Kisner gets over the playing time. Oklahoma gives up the ball. Nine seconds to go in the first half. And the uh, impact tackling of Penn State makes something big happen before halftime. Oh, that's a dumb play. It looked to me like they were going to throw the ball way down the field. If you simply take the ball and fall on it, the half ends, and it's over with. This is exactly what Penn State was looking for. Switzer is looking for Holloway. <laughs> Mistake. Joe's going to step by and talk to Jim Cephalo just before he goes to the locker room. But right now, nine seconds left. First half, Penn State trailing 16 to 7. Schaefer wisely throws it away as the Sooners cover very well. Don, it appears to me that he locks on the receivers out of the backfield. Dozier is covered and covered completely, and still he tried to throw it to him. Well, they're going to settle for the three points. He didn't look any other place but the D.J. Dozier out of the backfield. Zone coverage by Oklahoma. Nobody to throw it to. 
in his own color jersey. It's basically a wasted play. Penn State's kicking game excels. Massimo Manka done a big jab boot and field goal for the Nittany Lions. This is a 27-yarder. That'll bring them to within six and does. So with one second to play in the first half, the Penn State defense gets the ball. And Manka puts it through the upsides two plays later. And Penn State is right back in the hunt, failing 16 to 10. They'll kick it off with a second to play. Manka is a long range booter, something to keep in mind as this game goes tight down towards the end. He's three for four from outside the 50 yard line this year, born in Sardinia. This is a good spot for Oklahoma to use whatever trick kickoff return they might have. Reverse, pass, one second left. Ball is down on the kickoff, the first half ends. And State's big following here, 15,000 in to support the Nittany Lions in the Keystone State. As Penn State goes to the locker room, trailing the Sooners 16 to 10. Now down to Jimmy Cephalo. Joe, you utilized the timeout to get into the half, and it works in your favor. Yeah, well, that was a big break, Chris, because we needed a little lift, and fortunately, we get to receive the ball the second half, and then I think we've got to stop putting some things together. We're jumping all over the place. We don't know what we're doing right now. We're, uh, Oklahoma is very strong and very quick, and we're just, we got to settle down and do a couple of things and start doing them better, get a drive together, and we'll be okay. Our defense is playing off pretty well. They've been on the field quite often during the second quarter. They seem to be a little tired. Well, we played, we played some second kick in there. We, so we have enough kids. We have, we're too deep defensively. That doesn't worry me so much. I think we just got to, you know, careless interceptions and that kind of stuff. You can't beat a team like Oklahoma with that kind of stuff. Thanks, Coach. Okay. Don? They're pretty good, though, when they go to the drawing board. Joe Paterno and Penn State. Barry Switzer takes his Sooners to the locker room, holding to a 16-10 to 10 lead. The most spectacular halftime show in college football is coming up from the Orange Bowl.
students at Penn State University meet interesting people. People like this world authority on visual perception. He's developed a simple test to detect night vision problems, problems that went undetected before his discovery. And this researcher in the biomechanics of running. His tests of sports shoes are the most comprehensive in the country. And people like the theater professionals who come to Penn State to perform on stage and to teach in the classroom. And this authority on George Bernard Shaw. He's written dozens of acclaimed books on the playwright. And people like this internationally known scientist. He developed a whole new chemistry of free atoms, a discovery that has simulated worldwide research in this area. At Penn State, we're proud of our winning tradition in teaching and research. Boy, the score is the Oklahoma Sooners 16 and the Penn State Nittany Lions 10. A couple of really big plays during the first half. The biggest, of course, the big pass from Holloway to Jackson down the middle of the field, and that's what Penn State was worried about all day long. The Oklahoma Sooners had tried to run the wishbone over and over again and then make that defensive Penn State go to sleep, and the big play from Holloway over to Jackson was the big one for Penn State. They went away from uh, that running game that had worked successfully in the first quarter and started to throw the football. At the end of the first half, Joe Paterna goes and uses those timeouts and enables Penn State to come up with a big turnover. Of course, right now, the Oklahoma Sooners, the number two ranked team in the country, playing very well on top of Penn State by a score of 16 to 10. We're ready for a special halftime show from the Orange Bowl Committee and Walt Disney World called The Living Seas. So let's catch up with Goofy and Captain Hook on their voyage to the the bottom of the ocean where they meet some strange and wonderful characters. halftime show will be underway in just a few minutes. Once again, it is called The Living Seas. It's been brought to you by the Orange Bowl Committee and Walt Disney World. And this is what the Orange Bowl is known for. Their spectacular halftime shows, as well as their great football games. Once again, Penn State uh, 10, Oklahoma, the University of Oklahoma 16 over uh, Penn State at 10. Uh, halftime action coming to you with the Orange Bowl Committee and Walt Disney World. This is a spectacular show. I was able to see a little bit earlier on. I was able to watch some of the rehearsals. And uh, once again, Walt Disney World has really knocked themselves up. So let's catch up with Goofy and Captain Hook while they do go to that middle of the ocean and their wonderful and strange characters. Disney World and the Orange Bowl Committee proudly present the Living Seas, the 52nd Annual Orange Bowl Halftime Celebration. This Wednesday night you're all mine, it's the night you're fine, all the wishes still alive, you have to call. It's some old man that all the day will carry you away, it's just to see us get you in Neptune's hall. So come along and follow me to the bottom of the sea, we'll join you in the jury, I got this ball. Also, you hold good time of reminder. 
gentleman's club come out of the snow to the wheel.
in a career of mine. It's not a fox for a fool. It has a little bit of new rhythm, a blue rhythm inside. It has a meter that is sticky. With the wicked, wacky, wicky, oh, no love, there'll be true love and pride. Oh, darling. a fantastic journey. Tonight's voyage was based on a future exhibit at Epcot Center. Our thanks to Dan McNamara and Bill Ledoux of the Orange Bowl Committee and to Gary Maven, Steve Scaria, and Michael Loft of the Walt Disney World. We'll be back for the second half action right now. Let's go to Bob Costas. <laughs> All right, we'll be returning to the Orange Bowl in just a few moments. First, let's take a look at some highlights from the first half with Oklahoma in front in the battle for the national champion. Manoa, one-yard plunge, capped a 62-yard opening drive. They had the lead at 7-0, but a Tim Lasher field goal brought Oklahoma to within 7-3, and then Jamel Holloway goes up top, and there is Keith Jackson hauling it in 71 yards after the catch and run, and he'll boogie a little bit in the end zone. Oklahoma has the lead at that point at 10-7. Interception set up a couple of Lasher field goals later on. He had three field goals during the first half. Here is John Schaefer being intercepted by Tony Rayburn. He returns it to the nine-yard line of Penn State. Lasher then hit from 21. He earlier had a 31-yarder. 16-10 the score. Oklahoma in front, third quarter. And they're in front of Miami 28-7. Now, the Hurricanes had held out hope that maybe if they won convincingly in this game and Oklahoma just snuck by Penn State, Miami, considering the fact that they had beaten Oklahoma earlier this year, and Norman could sneak in as the national champions, but the Hurricanes are losing in the third, 28 to 7. We'll go back to Miami right after. Miami, Florida, City of Light on January 1, 1986, with college football's national championship game probably being played right now because Tennessee is belting Miami right out of contention. Iowa's already gone, having lost to UCLA in the Rose Bowl. And here at the Orange Bowl, it is the Oklahoma Sooners leading the Nittany Lions of Penn State 16 to 10. Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy and Bob Greasy. Coach Trumpy, what is your suggestions to the Sooners and the Nittany Lions at halftime? Well, first of all, Joe Paterno, I think, uh, answered our question that uh, beginning of the second half, they'll take the ball. Secondly, uh, Penn State has a grand total of 67 yards. That's total offense in the first half. They got 62 on their opening drive. That means for the rest of this first half, just five yards, if my math is correct. The other thing 
is. I think for Oklahoma, you, you got to somehow get someone else other than Lydell Carr to run in the football. He's the only guy to really gain yards for Oklahoma. All these teams like to run the ball, Bob Greasy, and they only have 31 to the Penn State Nittany Lions at halftime. What about the quarterbacking? I think both defenses tried to shut down the running game and force the quarterbacks to throw. John Schaefer looked good the first drive, made some good throws, but since that drive has thrown the ball very poorly, could have had a few more picked off, had two interceptions that turned in for points. Schaefer has to play better if Penn State's going to try and win. And on the other side, Holloway, two for three, and the long touchdown pass. They've shut down his run. They want to force him to throw, and uh, he needs just to not turn the ball over, as we said uh, early in the ballgame. Penn State people halftime were punching walls virtually over the long ball they gave up the Nittany Lions beat on a 71 yard touchdown scoring play rarely have they been beaten Trump this year in a long pass play I think the critical part of this play was that Ray Isom the safety for the Penn State, Penn State Nittany Lions was out of the ball game his backup Bookman was in there in coverage and Keith Jackson at 6'3 240 pounds just flat out ran that defender down the field for a 71 but up much more than they did Don I can tell you there are some situations where a player tries to do too much as you look at the first half stats. And the most impressive thing is just the lack of total yardage by both of these teams. Now, both teams come in with outstanding defenses, but I think uh, everyone involved on both sides of the ball expected more than 67 yards total offense for Penn State and 136 for Oklahoma. Oklahoma's done nothing out of the wishbone. Rydell Carr of the... Of the 53 off the board last year, and Washington quickly hit on some scoring plays and scored a major upset that may have cost Oklahoma national championship. Updating his Bob Passers was telling you at halftime, Tennessee, with its fine defense at the Sugar Bowl, despite being a big underdog, the Volunteers are blowing out Miami of Florida, number four in one poll, number two in another, 28 to seven. That game in the third quarter. So in all probability, with Iowa having been beaten today in the Rose Bowl, the outcome of this game will indeed determine which team is now for the choice of the coin flip. They're going to take the ball now to begin the second half. And in six of Penn State's 11 victories so far this season, they have come from behind. Barry Switzer in his 13th season at Oklahoma with 83% wins. That's the best in the nation among the long-term coaches. To the 30, and Oklahoma throws him back after a 23-yard return, and Penn State comes on offense first and 10. John Schaefer, quarterback, intercepted twice in the first half. His running back, Steve Smith and Tim Manoa, alternate at fullback. D.J. Dozier, the breakaway runner, usually the eye back. David Clark will see action. Eric Hamilton and Ray Roundfree are the wide receivers. Dean Demidio is the tight end. Dozier not having a Hall of Fame night tonight, but he can break loose at any time. 2-10 with breakaway speed. Dozier. And the Sooners are right there to chop him down. Casillas gets interceptions. His last five passes thrown in the first half. Three incompletions, two interceptions. Second and nine now for the Nittany Lions at 31. Close to the 40 and very close to a Penn State first down. We'll see what they spot the ball. It should be no more than a yard short. Sonny Brown, who had one of those first half interceptions for the Sooners, came up to make the play. Jeff Tupper, Tony Casillas, and Steve Bryan across the defensive front of Oklahoma. The linebackers stood out throughout the first half. Darrell Reed and Kevin Murphy at the outsides. Miliazzo and Bosworth inside. That was the longest Penn State run of the game, an eight-yard advance. They take a two-footer right here. That's what they need. Less than a yard. Got to get the ball to the 40 for a first down. One, two, and three tries by fullback Steve Smith at 235 pounds, and he finally got there when it looked like the Sooners had stepped in. Paul Meliazzo on the tackle. That is sheer determination by Steve Smith not to be denied. It appears it is a first down and watch Joe Paterno. He'll take good coaching, he'll take great players, and when all else fails, a little bodily, body English. Whatever it takes, and it'll take a lot tonight. 
Oklahoma with the number one defense in the country, allowing 8.5 points a game. Penn State got seven on its opening drive, but none. Now on second down and eight. Nickney Lions ready to roll it from the 32, and here's Schaefer. 42-yard line. Well, well. 47's a big number in the storied histories of Oklahoma and Penn State football. In 47 years since Penn State has had a losing season. Do you believe that? And Oklahoma has the all-time winning for 47 straight games. Running high with the ball is Michael Simpson, a sprinter from Miami, and he crosses midfield, gets down to the 48-yard line. They liken him to their former All-American at Penn State, Kenny Jackson, now the Eagles. 21 yards, but Timpson is a lot faster. This is the first time this young man has ever played on the surface of the Orange Bowl. Grew up in Miami, Florida, was a great track star here at Hialeah High School. And he almost breaks it, 21 yards. That's the longest game of the night for the Penn State Nittany Lions. Oklahoma in the lead, 16 to 10, early in the third quarter. Dozier. Stop Dozier for little or no game. DJ Dozier had over 700 yards rushing. Now it's just 20 yards and nine carries. They could get time and he dumps it up to Dozier on a second and nine play. It'll leave uh, the Nittany Lions about five yards short. As again, Sonny Brown is making tackles all over the field, makes another throw the Nittany Lions. Good recovery by Schaefer and a strike to the video. It's a first down for Penn State to the 33-yard line of Oklahoma. 12 yards. Bob Greasy. Read by Schaefer, Don, as he throwing against a zone coverage. is tied in is right here. It's going to come and hook to the outside. Now, both of these linebackers right here will drop, and he'll find the seam in between the linebackers. Tight end hooks up. And Schaefer finds the uh, receiver. It was the best read he's had in uh, about an hour and a half. That was a terrific play by Schaefer. You recall he stumbled after taking the snap and recovered to hit a first down throw. Dozier. Now that's Smith. Rush it for Penn State. Here's Steve Smith with just 23 yards and eight carries. Second and nine for the Nittany Lions. Good throw. Coming out was Brian Cyberling, and he is down inside the 25-yard line. Still short of a first down, it would appear, where they stop the ball. Now it appears they're running another pass offense than they did the first half. Most of what they threw in the first half was way down the field. Now they're throwing it underneath to the tight ends. This, once again, is an excellent read. It's just a little drag pattern run by the tight end. He picks up almost eight yards, and with the depth of the cornerbacks of the Oklahoma uh, defense, I think that player is there anytime he wants it. Look how far off the cornerback is at the top of the screen. He's going to get 10 yards off. This the 11th play of Penn State's drive. Schaefer takes it himself. Head down. He's ahead for a first down to the 21-yard line. So Penn State showing a lot of looks on offense. Comes right down the field at Oklahoma. Got a divot in his face mask. What the wide receiver was wide open. Like what happened here. There is no problem whatsoever getting the ball to Timpson. The defensive back is way off in coverage, but for some reason, Schaefer prefers to run, but he does pick up the first down. 12th play of the drive, coming up. 9-10 to go, third quarter. They're going to air it out again. Long ball. Timpson's out there. Intercepted again. Sonny Brown comes down with his second of the night. In the double coverage of 10, Don. Tight end was wide open. Against Schaefer's third interception of the evening. Oklahoma looking to get room to operate. Make the penalty was signaled against the Sooners in the last play. Penalized half the distance to the goal, so they start out almost backed up to the goal line. Penn State's not giving them much. Another marker goes down. Unless they mount a miraculous comeback. This is it. This game will decide the national champion of college football. 
The Sooners leading by six, but in trouble deep in their own end as the Nittany Lions stuff the run again. Lydell Card trying to just get some room to operate for the Oklahoma Lightning. They'll keep pounding all game long, looking for turnovers. Second down and almost ten. All away, living dangerously. And it'll be third down and ten. Spencer Tillman coming out of the backfield. Jamel didn't see the end of that play. He was looking at the Miami Moon. John Gonzalez, executive producer Michael Weissman with us as the Sooners try to bust it out and the Nittany Lions come hitting hard. It's a safety. Winchester, a standout punter from Marietta, Oklahoma. Snapper drills it. And Winchester does too as Jim Coates pedals back to the 49. Reverse. Kimson gets the ball. There's some blockers and Michael Bumble tossed it up. Oklahoma has the ball at the Sooners 42 yard line. Get wrapped. Oklahoma get good field position, anything like that. Winchester has been really booming the ball. Sooners have a tremendous kicking game. Field goal kicker's been perfect on four tries. Fumble by Coates. Did he get it? He did at the 41-yard line. So now the Nittany Lions trailing 19 to 10. Go with the backup thrower, Matt Kisner, who's only put the ball up 19 times this season, has completed 10. The Super Bowl tournament continues at NBC Sports this weekend. Only one interception this year. He's going to be throwing now. He's had some experience this season in the first play of the Alabama game in relief of injured John Schaefer. He threw an 11-yard touchdown pass to Ryan Silverling. For the Lions' only touchdown in the game, so Penn State hopes this guy comes in hot. Tough as it, Bob Greasy, to come in at this point. They're off the bench in the game. You have to throw in to win. Get to Bob in a moment. It's right now. It's first and 10 for Penn State. Kisner dropping back. Dozier gets it on his swing. And these Sooners are striking. They swarm to the ball. They went in their pursuit. And Dozier got ahead for only about four yards. What about Bob Greasy coming off the bench with very little warm-up time with the pressure of the national championship game on? Well, there's no question, Don. He's going to be nervous. But the good part about it is he knows it's not going to be his fault if they lose. He can be a hero. So he's got to think positive. He says, I'm coming into this game. I've got everything to gain and nothing to lose because I'm nine points behind already. Schaefer, this pass for only 76 yards, was intercepted three times while he was in for the Nittany Lions. Dozier, great one. First down, Penn State. He's down to the 47-yard line with 6.04. In the Timeout on the field with 6.04 left to play. Penn State having to change quarterbacks. Their starter, John Schaefer, threw three interceptions, moved his team well on three different drives, but when they get down close, the coverage was there, and so were the interceptors, and so John Schaefer, number 14, will watch the rest of this in the sideline. He's a junior. We'll be back next year. Now, the thing about John Schaefer is he's not throwing the ball badly. He's made bad choices, and the, the position of quarterback is a position of ball. We have the tight end open down the middle. He throws it into double coverage on the outside, and all of a sudden, things start to go apart for Penn State and John Schaefer, and now Kisner in to try to rescue this football game. And that will take some doing with 6.04 to go. The national championships, 50, 55 and 56 under Wilkinson, 74 and 75 under Switzer, as the Sooners uh, could be closing in on national championship number six. And many of their top people are back. Most of them. Same is true for Penn State. Another big play by a Sooner target, right? Smart play, starting with an easy pass earlier, target. a screen pass. Yes. Hits. It's a ball to Smith. He's got a Penn State first down to the 33-yard line of Oklahoma. And a penalty marker down. So a backup quarterback, Matt Kisner, in the game for the Nittany Lions. They now start out in a jam, down by nine. In the fourth quarter, 5.25 to play. He's going to throw now on first and 25. Whoa. Cyberlane has it. He's inside the 30 to the 29. 
That's back about 16 yards, 18 yards when they stopped the ball. He fired that one. That was good fundamentals by a quarterback. Excellent. Set up well. Looked a linebacker off. Threw it to Cyberling, the tight end, wide open. That's nice. There's a distinguishing characteristic about this Penn State team. It's character. They fought back from behind all season long to win games and go 11-0. Kisner has now put the ball up four times, completed three for 36, and he's ready to fire again. Another strike. Cyberling out of bounds for a first down. 4-34 to play in the game. Oklahoma leads 19-10. 13-yard pickup by Cyberlane, just a pattern underneath the zone coverage by the Oklahoma Sooners. Good protection. Prisoner has time to look out there in the flat. Another first down. Now three catches, 37 yards for Cyberlane. Park is hit hard by Donnie Jones. Linebacker shooting the gap for the can as the Nittany Lions are challenging now. They have to get in the end zone though. They get back in this game. Gesner takes it to the 10. On a second and 10 play, he got ahead for about six yards. He certainly appears to be ready. He's not shown any signs of sitting on the bench for three quarters. Run the ball very well. This is the 12th possession of the football game for Penn State. They've scored on both previous possessions starting outside their own 35. That is, going in to score. They started at their 40 this time. Well, at the 1986 Orange Bowl in Miami, it's been a beautiful week in South Florida, clear and sunny, a very warm night. Temperature in the high 70s. Both these teams playing spirited, aggressive football throughout. Tuned and honed to a fine edge for this national championship game. And now, the pressure is tremendous on the Penn State Nittany Lions and Coach Joe Paterno. They come in number one in America in every poll. Unbeaten through 11 games, but trailing Oklahoma 19 to 10. And after the defeats earlier today, Iowa's loss to UCLA in the Rose Bowl, and then Tennessee's route of Miami in the Sugar Bowl. The winner of this wins the national championship. A backup quarterback is in for Penn State. Matt Kisner, and he's completed four or five for 49 yards. Looking in the end zone, he takes a hard hit from Dante Jones on third and four. He got only a yard. Now fourth down. Massimo Manka, a long-range bomber. He's hit once tonight. This will be from 27 yards. He's hit from 26. Very effective from way out if need be. No good. Give it all there. This year, Oklahoma came back to win the national title, and they did. It's been a great year for Penn State, ending on a disappointing note. Joe Paterno with another standout team, number one in all the polls coming in, but a decided underdog in the opinion of the odds makers. And in the end, it proved to be the Sooners a decided victor as they now lead 25 to 10 with 142 to play. If there is a positive aspect for Penn State, only six seniors graduate. They'll be someplace playing New Year's Day again next year. It hurts with all that work and all that effort, while on the other side, the jubilation of Oklahoma is something to behold. Players jumping up and down as Penn State runs it back, reverse with the ball. Ray Roundtree, but there's a sooner right there to get to go. Penn State almost out of time and out of luck. As Kisner dumps one off, Manoa takes a stick. And the game clock continues to tick down to 125 and running. Don uh, Bosley of his first national championship, 44, made the tackle on that play. The guys getting their stuff together, it'd be a pretty good party going a little late. And a, uh, such great uh, congeniality and yet aptitude for the game of football. And uh, he's coached a lot of time and you put up with crazy haircuts and irresponsible kids and try to make them national champions. You don't get too many irresponsible Exceed his grasp and last year this team was six and five blown out at the close of the season by Notre Dame and Pittsburgh. 
From the ashes, they rose up to have a number one ranked team, but not a national championship. As the Sooners, with high power offense and the best defense in the land, ready to close in and make it official. 50 seconds to go. Penn State calls a timeout. Turner called by a lot of people just a wise uncle. And there are several people on this Penn State football team. One of them is Shane Conlon, who was a big part of the team success this season, who has another year of eligibility left. He could turn pro this year if he wants. Someone asked him whether he would or not. He said, it's up to Joe Paterno. I'm going to talk to him and do what he says. That's what kind of confidence these kids have in Mr. Paterno. Back, Paterno is a class act, and he's got a lot of good players for next year. Oklahoma fans up and chanting as Kisner drops to throw, puts one up. It's caught out to the 23-yard line. The game clock ticks down to 44, and the Nittany Lions stop it one more time. All right, it'll stop because they got to change the markers for the... Another throw, another catch. That game clock winding out. Dean Demidio catching the last one. We'd like to give special thanks to... Athletic Director Wade Walker of Oklahoma and Sports Information Director Mike Treps and also to Athletic Director Jim Tarman of Penn State University and Dave Baker, the Sports Information Director. Again, the final gun of the final college. Fighting as long and hard as they did to beat a superior team, I believe, in Oklahoma. And the turnovers just killed them. The countdown to a national championship for Oklahoma. Coming down with the ball is Daryl Giles. Now it's down to 18 and running. Yard markers are moved. Bosch is stopped momentarily. Don, you realize that with Oklahoma's victory tonight, the only Big A team in bowl competition this year to win. Colorado lost, Nebraska lost, and Oklahoma State lost. Only sitting with another big play by the defense, Waddell Glenn, a junior cornerback, runs it back, and he almost took it the distance as he's down with three seconds to play. And the final numbers are up. Four seconds to go. Last year, the Boomer Schooner cost him a penalty. But when this uh, clock ticks down, I think it has every right to take a joint up and down the field. There'll be no flags, and you'll still get the national championship. I think those ponies are ready to run. Yes, they are. Run sound. Well tried. Rested. <laughs> in that corner all night. They're waiting with their driver and their shoveler. <laughs> Gordon Number tried to run. This will do it. The capper on a national championship season for the Sooners of Oklahoma. Oklahoma 25, Penn State 10, and Kurt Switzer goes out of victory in a national championship coach. You see what he said? You can read his lips. Way to go defense. Way to go defense. Well, how do you vote an MVP for the entire defensive performance against Penn State tonight? Ray Switzer, really a great comeback of sorts after being upset here a year ago. A great defensive team. Earlier on the, in the season, a lot of people expected Oklahoma to be here as national champions at the end of the year. Did you ever doubt it? I, 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 yeah, when our quarterback got hurt, but yet our, our guy did a super job. It was a great team effort. Penn State's a great team, and we're fortunate. It was our night. It was our night. Hell, did it. That's it, a closing cut by Grumpy. Uh, I'm just uh, shocked at, at the performance of Oklahoma. They didn't do what they do well, and that is run the wishbone. My Del Carr's numbers are kind of surprising with that last run for all those yards. It was the turnovers and the, the poor choices of John Schaefer that really gave Oklahoma the opportunity, and it's fun to see a team that's worked so hard to win the national championship.